Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining with us today for this webinar uh, with uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Dilip uh, Chetri. Uh, as you know, he's a renowned prime metallurgist. I have been, uh, you know, uh, seeing him uh, since I was a kid working on primates. So now I'm, I'm quite honored to be hosting him today. Uh, so since there's a time limit uh, of only 40 minutes, and we have already spent about uh, five minutes uh, organizing this, uh, we'll be uh, restricting uh, the talk to about 20, 25 minutes. And then if time permits, we'll be taking questions through the chat room. So you can uh, put your questions to the chat room if you have any, and then at the end, the speaker will address uh, whatever questions possible. And if we can't uh, address all the questions, we'll try to uh, get back to you through email. So now I hand this over to uh, Dilip Da, so you can see he can share his screen and start his talk. Thank you. Namaskar, good morning. I am Dilip Chitri from RNAC. Today I'll be speaking on golden langur, touching basic uh, ecology and conservation. As you know, in India, we have uh, 26, species of, uh, 26 species of primates. Out of 26 species uh, in Northeast India, we have uh, 12 species of primates. Out of 12 species, golden langur is one of, one of the species. These 26 species of primate, we can divide the species in four groups, apes, langur, macaques, and loris. So welcoming to the langur, you know, lang uh, in, in, again, a langur can be divided in two groups, Indian uh, langurs, one Sinopithecus, another Tetrapithecus, where uh, golden langur is there. Golden langur is one of the beautiful species of primates in India. Uh, in India, it is really charismatic, and it is uh, one of the most top 25 most endangered species in the world since 2016. Uh, it is already in the endangered list Ayushian, and it is endemic to Assam and Bhutan. Mainly in Assam and Bhutan only the distribution is restricted, and it is well well protected by the laws in the Schedule One in Wildlife Protection Act 1972, and Schedule One Forest and Conservation, uh, Conservation Nature's Conservation Act of Bhutan also. So welcoming to the global distribution. Uh, global population of the golden langur, you know, is really uh, before 2000, we did some uh, assessment in 2009, it came around uh, 5,141. Then one took at all 2003, we are taking. Recently, Thinley, we, uh, Thinley have done fantastic work. Uh, they have surveyed the, the golden langur throughout the Bhutan and the population, uh, I mean, decreased drastically plus minus uh, 2,516, you know. So as a, as a whole, the global population is now, now around less than 8,000. So it is a restricted range, of, I, already I said, it is in Assam, you, you know, it is geographically between the river Sankos in the west and east in the Manas and Brahmaputra. And the potential habitat in Assam is only um, 1,255 square kilometer in Bhutan. 2848 square kilometer. Just looking this uh, map, you know, if you see this map, you know the green portion. The green portion is uh, this side is Bhutan, and this lower portion is is Assam, and this is River Manas, and this is Sunkos. Especially in Assam, the habitat is gradually decreasing. You know, this lot a lot of uh, gradually the habitat is decreasing, decreasing, and uh, the from this area the golden language gradually wiped out. So we also see golden language have been uh, introduced in some of the outside the distribution range, especially in Uman and in 84. Uh, the, in uh, 84, they have been introduced by some, some sadhus. But uh, these are breeding center, they are free ranging in, and it's very much breeding up to 11 individuals gradually due to some health condition, they decrease in 2019. Four species have been shifted to Guwahati Jew for conservation breeding program. Now it is very sad to see that there is no golden langur in Umananda. Same in uh, 2000, uh, 1988, and uh, golden was in, introduced in Sipajala uh, as well as Tisna Wildlife Sanctuary. But uh, 
there is no record now. Another thing, you know, once you at all have uh, advocate uh, the golden age, having two species like uh, Tachipitika gi butansis and Tachipitika gi gi in southern portion and northern, but I send yet to yet to recognize this subspecies. So welcoming the habitat of golden lingon no, no, so from uh, from through the uh, flat plain of Assam in western Assam to the foothill of uh, uh, foothill of uh, Bhutan up to the Black Mountain, you know, uh, right from tropical evergreen, most evergreen, green, subtropical, uh, warm broadleaf and salt dominant. Still, uh, we can also find a good population in in some of the rubber plantations in western Asia. The altitude ranges from 29 meter, you know, 29 meter in uh, Asia. So in Asia, you know, the distribution or, or population we can see uh, in six or seven uh, wildlife division from Western Asia, it's around 5,141 only. The other species uh, which is found in the, with the habitat of, along with the habitat of golden language, Rhesus macaque, Assamese, and Slowlois. Uh, we'll see the, the uh, head and body uh, body weight. I mean, they're, they're gradually from nine to 12 kilometer, uh, 12 kg of weight and uh, female is uh, smaller than the male. In the social system, we see, uh, we, we usually see unimale, multimale, uh, bimale, multimale, multimale, multifemale, and all band. There's all band is like in Hanuman language. This, uh, in golden language, we'll find all medicine. Sometimes we, we'll get a few long, male also, adult male also. But among this, unimale, multimale is most stable, stable and permanently dominant in the golden language society. Another thing we can see in golden language is that they are uh, matrilineal uh, society. And uh, generally the adult male, uh, adult male, uh, dominant male is dispersed from the mother troop. There's another very interesting thing, the allo mothering or aunt behavior. When the infant is born, the, the other auntie or the other in, uh, juvenile uh, individual, female individual, take care of the infant one. And the group uh, size actually ranges from two to 35 from its range. And if you see uh, some of the studies uh, carried out in Asham, especially, you know, we see 99% uh, they are active on the tree. They are truly arboreal. And uh, the ranging in the right from the sunrise, they start uh, ranging. They're moving from the lodging to, to the next lodging tree. It's generally travel 200 to 700 meter daily. If you see the home range ranges from uh, 10 hectare to 25 hectare. This is totally in uh, Golden language are <coughs> diamond animal, and they spend a lot of time in different activities like uh, resting, locomotion, feeding, grooming, and monitoring and playing. Uh, we have seen that, that, that they have divided their whole day activity in different activities, in different percentage also. In, it depends upon the season as well as the fruiting, uh, fruiting uh, availability. You see, they, in all, throughout the study uh, area, it says that they spend maximum time resting, feed, uh, followed by feeding, locomotion, monitoring. We also compared uh, this activity budget with the natural habitat as well as alternate ha habitat where the rubber, rubber plantation, sorry, what is rubber plantation is there in Western Assam. There's a gradual, uh, there is no, not much difference, you know, it's quite similar. The grooming, another thing, important, uh, important activity is, it is a social activity of the language. It gives, it gives the language in hygienic condition as well as to, to keep the bonding with the individuals. Uh, mainly we have, uh, we have seen that there is a 16 uh, site, grooming site in, the, in, in of the golden limb in the body. Mainly the grooming, uh, yellow grooming occurs mainly in the back and the tail. Well, coming to food or feeding, you know, it is a colobine or we can say that they peter. They are polyvores and maximum uh, more than 60% of their dietary is on the leaf. Uh, we have identified 200 species of plant uh, plants used for food. It's, it's from uh, tree, salt, climber, lions, and epiphyte. If you see this, uh, this uh, chart, you can see the height percentage is leaf followed by fruits, petioles, flower, 
stem cortex, leaf buds, seed, twigs, even the insects, you know, the protein that they are getting, they are also taking from the insects. And uh, uh, Gordon is also taking non consumable food, you know, like gum eating, soil eating, in, uh, soil eating, algae, snail are eating, uh, reported from Ulta Pani. And you see the, the golden or at, at night, they want to go, to go to sleep or take rest in the lodging tree. Some of the lodging tree during our study, we have identified. This is a key, uh, key plant species. That means this five is a top of five by species where the golden is used for the fruiting, fruit tree as well as the lodging trees. Welcoming to, uh, they actually get matured five to seven years and the female actually four years and the breeding signal generally start from June, June to January and the peak of birth is in May. Sometimes it is up to July or sometimes September also. The gestation similar with other primates, 168 to 180 days, uh, birth interval two years and uh, the offspring, one female, adult female gives around seven, uh, seven to nine offspring. The enemies, you know, it, it depends upon the habitat where the, these carnivores are there. The tiger, maybe in the, the manas, the leopard in Chakrashila, and the wild, wild dog, python, even the domestic dog, and bird of prey. The bird of prey, especially the infants, are very much uh, uh, vulnerable to the bird of prey. While coming to the threats, while coming to the threats, the threats perspective of the golden, you see the encroachment, social unrest, especially in the borderland area. Development activity, elutivism, uh, domestic dog, uh, road accident, illegal logging, charcoal production, fuel wood, man animal conflict, diseases, fragmentation, and hybridization. This hybridization is mainly in Bhutan. Otherwise, all the uh, all this uh, threat spectrum similar with Bhutan as well as in India. Just to see uh, in uh, in uh, throughout the range uh, habitat of golden lingo, the uh, habitat is encroached for agriculture, development, as well as settlement. The illegal, still illegal is banned. Illegal logging is banned, but still is going on throughout the range. Then uh, this fringe area, people are very poor. They always go for fuel collection in the near village. There are a lot of, uh, in the fringe area, uh, the electrocution is a lot of, uh, is there. And the golden lingo is killed by the dog. You know, in each of the household in the fringe area, they keep the dog. So this domestic dog usually kill the golden lingot, and there's a lot of charcoal production from this range of habitat. Then another very serious is the rhesus, rhesus monkey throughout this range where they, they raid the crops. Then another disease, you know, in 2006, we have identified the nematode larvae, larvae from the Ultapani, and there are some of, some of the eye diseases also have been recorded. Well, coming to hybridization, you know, especially it is uh, uh, when the Bhutan uh, um, developed five bridge, suspension bridge with the barrier over the river so that the, there is a crossover of the Cape Langur uh, to the Golden Lord habitat. And the, this is the hybrid zone where 380 kilometer hybrid zone was recognized around 39 group and 700 group. They, uh, maybe yesterday uh, I, I got an email from uh, Thille. We, he said uh, they are analyzing the data. I think we can see his work. He's, he's doing very fantastic work in Bhutan. I think we, we, we hope to see his new paper. See, due to all these threats, the uh, push the language to local extinction, uh, there is eight already identified, but uh, it, it will, uh, four or five is more yet to come uh, already. The golden is gradually, gradually going up from this habitat. But still, we have a good uh, good number of protected area, uh, two in Assam, Manas and Chakrashila, and three from Bhutan. So we are, we are hoping the good conservation in this area. And uh, legal, the conservation structure, you know, the legally, whether in Bhutan or India or internationally, it is well protected from. The welcoming to the golden language in southernmost population in Chakrashila, where, where we are working. We are working, you know. Here we see we see very good number of population. Population gradually increasing, uh, grazing. The density is very high. If you see this uh, chart, you know it is really, it's not encouraging. You know here you see the maximum is adult, uh, adult the juvenile and infant is less. 
there is some mortality either in juvenile, uh, juvenile or in the infant is going on. We have we, we have to do some sort of study on this also. We did some of uh, my my friend, my colleague, Amitu uh, Pagan with the help some local NGO, he, he carried out some, still he's uh, carrying out his studies, motivation, uh, education program throughout the fringe area of Chakrasila, so the, uh, around the Kokrajar. We also did uh, we also did some uh, posters, posters as well that we have the book in the Golden Language book in Assam, uh, English as well as in Assam. If you want to like, please send us email, we can send you. You know, uh, there's a lot to do. It is just a few we have started. There's a lot, there is a lot to do. It is a lot to do, but there is always constraint of the funding. There's a lack of funding. We cannot do a lot of work continuously. But still, it is encouraging that few few researchers are going researchers are going on on the spaces from the young generations are coming up coming up a new data collection is going on it's india as well as in, in bhutan so still i uh, still i feel that uh, we, we, we can go forward together this landscape uh, landscape approach and taking a uh, golden length of flagship species for conservation then connecting the uh, fragments, connecting the big fragments with small fragments by, by uh, biological corridor or green green bridge or green canopy bridge. Then uh, urgent needed studies for conflict, recess, human conflict. Since this area is a totally human-based uh, area, the community have been surrounded this habitat. So community-based program is uh, well needed. Then the, this insulation of uh, the insulation of, um, of the electric wire is urgently needed. The initiation of uh, education program, you know, to motivate the community as well as the student uh, student community is also urgently needed in this habitat. Then another thing, you know, the government, the government, Assam government, especially in Assam government, can declare Kokaichana reserve forest as a community reserve since this is having the good population of golden, uh, golden langur where the community is protecting helping the forest department and population is also increasing there is a long pending you know proposed ripuchirang wildlife sanctuary sanctuary which is 590 square kilometers is just in the foothill of uh, bhutan so this is pending on the government can especially declare this as a sanctuary for the for taking flexes as golden language another thing uh, you know need of our is like like uh, upgradation of chakrashila wildlife sanctuary with taking some of the forest reserve forest surrounding the reserve forest together as a national park taking flexes as a golden language, which will be the first first office kind for the primates in in northeast india so at the last, let us unite our hand for the sake of golden language. It is really, uh, it, uh, however, you know, in this post-corona pandemic, pandemic uh, world, world, it it will be a great challenge to conjure the wildlife as a whole. But but uh, but I but you know, every challenges give us new opportunities. We should always take this new opportunities. I hope we will be able to conserve the rich natural heritage heritage of all of the world, or you can say in Northeast India. Thank you. I also like to thank my my some some of the supporters, you know, Primate Conservation Inc., Mohammed bin Said Species Conservation Fund, PTS, Assam Forest Department. Uh, BTRU and some of my angels, my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Devda. Uh, now we have about uh, 15 minutes of time left for discussion. Uh, there are already some questions which uh, some of the participants have sent to uh, the host. So I'll just uh, read uh, uh, the questions and you can uh, probably uh, answer them and we can have uh, more discussion if they wish to do so. Uh, so the first first question is from Harsh Kumar. Uh, how were the number of langurs was estimated in Assam? How do you ensure you don't double count, given that these animals move around quite a bit? Uh, and he says at least uh, the human langurs I see uh, here in Tirupati, and probably not marked. 
so his question is basically about uh, how to avoid double count okay. because animals uh, basically look uh, uh, almost similar yeah yeah especially now you know recently uh, one of my colleague my friend uh, dr biswas is carrying out uh, the uh, carrying out the survey we we take a block wise block wise even in chakrasila we we divide into block and each block will will go and search it it is we, we will not put 100% it is an estimate we we get the estimate it's not the 100% we get but it is get we will get the estimate of the how many languages are there in each block at the last we'll just count total counting of the all the blocks mainly we we use the block counting or we we can say modified line transect right yeah, yeah. so uh there's another uh, query. Um, I think it's about uh, what they feed on. Uh, it is from uh, Sanraza uh, Mushahari. Is all natural or artificial feeds are also provided? Uh, probably he wants to ask if artificial feed is also provided to golden languages in some of the areas. You, uh, especially when uh, golden language is there in Uman, and, you know, last 10, 20, 20 years, even in the Jew, they are providing the artificial food. But in the natural habitat, they will always go for natural food. This is the most, I think, good for the health of this language. Since the language is a polyvorous or leaf eater, they should get maximum, maximum leaf, leaf available. Or we can, if you want to do some, I mean, instead of giving artificial food in the natural habitat, we can plant a tree so that they can give uh, give leaves to the golden lango. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll uh, be a little selective in some of the questions because some of the questions are not very clear. Uh, next question is from Vibhav Srivastava. I know Vibhav. Uh, what work is going on uh, to get public support from the local community? Any community-based ecotourism program? See, especially we are just uh, starting this program uh, and uh, maybe in, especially in Chakrashila, we have already talked to uh, Godoland Tourism Department for the home stay, you know. So homestay and ecotourism is very much good. It's very, very uh, good in the Chakrasila, in a, especially in the Jornagra area where Rabat community is there. There, in, especially in Chakrasila is good. There is a lot of other community also. Garo community is there. There is Rajvangsi, there is Boro community. So we can have each is the community, uh, their homestay. I think in, in this, in the, in the involving the community in their development. And already these people are in their ecotourism, uh, Eco um, committee, eco development committee of the sanctuary also there. So in this way, we'll, we are like gradually moving towards eco tourism. Okay. Yes, Udan. Yeah. So uh, the next question is from uh, Lux, uh, next question plus comment is from uh, Lakshman Karnal. Uh, Dilip Bhai, Namaste. This is Lakshman Karnal from Kathmandu. Uh, thank you very much for a nice informative presentation on Golden Langur. I have two questions. One is, uh, you said Golden Langur home range is between 10 to 25 hectares. What are the major uh, factors associated with such a big variation in home range? Uh, I, I, I think uh, if you answer the first uh, question, I'll uh, then read the yeah. second question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it depends upon you know the the home range is mainly depend upon the habitat quality, fruiting tree, predator presence. You know, if the predator is there, the home range is maybe the more. If the habitat quality is not good, the home range is also more. So, depend upon the, the habitat quality, the home range is depend. Another thing is also depend upon the troop size. If the troop size is small, home range may be small. If troop size is big, home range will be big. Yeah, Udan, thank you. Yeah, sure. So uh, the second question is, uh, is there any study on use of canopy bridges by Golden Langur? How frequently do they use such bridges? We are trying uh, a study for Himalayan Langurs in Nepal. See, we have not uh, done any study, but uh, we have seen, you know, in uh, near uh, Nightgown, where a rubber plantation is there, 
the langur generally cross sometimes they cross through some bamboo but i think uh, if uh, they will generally use we have used this in given wildlife sanctuary you know the given you should usually cross cross from this branch they just cross the railway track same way that we have seen the cape langur when the cape langur can cross uh, the railway track through the canopy branch i think uh, either hanuman langur or the golden langur will will do probably we are also planning to have uh, this sort of a canopy bridge in nine town we have already talked to btc uh, authority there are a lot of incidents is going on uh, near uh, rubber rubber plantation area the traffic is there so traffic is there so we are also planning hope uh, the either anuman langur all all golden langur all the cap langur will use use the canopy bridge Thank you. Uh, yeah. So uh, the next question is from uh, Harsh Kumar. Uh, inverted A structure pyramids are often a sign of decreasing population size, which is a data from uh, human population in different countries. Have you tried doing the same analysis, accounting for different sexes? No, we have not done any analysis. This. Okay. So the next um, uh, is from Dibya. I have some general questions regarding the fate of non-human primates in India. Uh, first, uh, even though India supports a rich, uh, such a rich biodiversity of primates, why do you think there is a, just a handful of studies, especially addressing ecology, especially the behavioral ecology of these primates? Is the first one you can answer. Mm. See, deep, uh, everything depends upon the question uh, uh, individual re researchers or his supervisor what uh, what he or she want to do the study you know depend upon that only the the individuals or the researchers go out for study if he had if he or she had the research question already set up and he want to get the answer and he can go for other study also so it depend upon the individual as well as the research design uh next is uh take uh talking about the 12 uh, species found in northeast india some of them are severely threatened like gibbons golden langur fire leaf monkey etc what do you feel uh, should be the correct measure to save these their populations along with contributing as along with continuing the studies on their behavior uh, yeah so there's a see i think uh, we can go landscape uh, landscape mass or we can we can take a uh, take hulo gibbon as a flexis species in uh, eastern assam if you take assam we can take a uh, hulo gibbon as a flexis for conservation of whole of the primates you know in western assam in in eastern assam in western assam you, we can take a um, golden language is instead of going each species if we take a flexis species either gibbon you know since gibbon is arboreal and canopy dwelling species so if the habitat is good gibbon is good if gibbon is good all the species especially it is you know where gibbon is there the seven species other is primary six seven species are there so if a gibbon is safe habitat is safe is habitat so all the species either say using other cap language or the macaques everything is safe i think it is always the advisable to go with the flexis species conservation mode Yes, Rudan. Yeah. So, uh, third part is how convinced are you regarding the theory of cap langur being a hybrid between capped? Uh, I think uh, she meant uh, meant uh, golden and grey langur. I I don't know because uh, the capped is yeah yeah yeah. See, uh, the research says you know even current have said uh, synoptikas. Uh, I mean the evolution. Since I uh, I'm not a genetist. See, we should always respect the finding. I don't know what the finding will come. If the finding will come, we should respect it. Even same with the hybrid one. You know, if, if somebody will do the genetic uh, genetic uh, study with the hybrid uh, golden population Bhutan, then only we can say uh, this popular this species is that. Other will just see the morphological color, coloration or morphological statistics. Then we cannot say strictly. So we should always be uh, we should always respect the data. Or we should always respect the genetic data. Let's wait what it will come. Or we should respect the geneticist. 
Jen with this. Okay. Okay. Udayan can also help in in this way. Yeah. Uh, maybe after three years, I will answer. <laughs> anyway, so the next question, uh, sir, uh, it's from Prabal Kakati. Sir, my question is that can golden langur show aggressiveness to other local monkey uh, in that area? No, no, uh, no. I have not, we have not seen, especially I have not seen also golden langur. But the macaques, you know, sometimes uh, if, if they are uh, eating together, sometimes the adult macaque uh, or make some sound, the golden langur gradually goes. We have not seen. Maybe some, uh, I have not seen any yeah. aggressive of the golden langur. But if they see, if they see like dog, they will bark, you know, they will just give an alarm bark just to see the, their predator is there. But instead of that, uh, we have not seen. The next question is, uh, what measures are taken if langurs are attacked by disease in the wild area? Uh, right now, I think we have not taken. Already, uh, Bissos, uh, Dr. Bissos have done some of the studies with the, with the help of DST and his student is still doing. But uh, the, I think uh, they have already reported their finding to the government, government of Assam. Right now, I don't know what step the government is doing. I don't know. But I think uh, it, it is going on. It is only reported. So uh, the next um, is, uh, hello, I am Devalina Banerjee from Calcutta. After APS, this is a golden opportunity. Is the golden langur commensal or, or fully wild species? See, it is a um, it is not a common species like Hanuman langur. Uh, it is a wild species. It is only you are getting wild. But uh, in even in Chakrasila also, you you get to it's a very community. Sometimes the golden langur comes to the village nearby village in in Kakoijana also. They usually come during the winter or when the food is available. Or they will use common. But this is not purely. Comments just like a Hanuman langur or as a rhesus monkey. We can say Burman langur is purely wild langur. Right. So I just missed one question uh, before. Uh, what is the impact of ecotourism in golden langur population? Oh, right now, you, you know, in Chakrasila, there is no good tourism effect. Very few people, very few people used to visit even in Kakoijana also. So I think the effect is yet to analysis and yet, yet, yet to, I mean, evaluate it. Since it is very less people used to go to see the golden langur. In Assam, everybody will, will go to Kajiranga to see the big animal or the manas to see the tiger. So the, I mean, this species have been neglected. I, I won't say the golden langur is still the primary species. The tourism is yet to start. So uh, next is from Nibir Medhi. Sir, in some places, golden langurs are very much affected by logging. What measures can be taken for it, especially in regions uh, west of Manas National Park? Yeah, it, it is, it is in recent also, it can came in the news also, you know, the big, big logs are going out through with, with these uh, tractors. You know, it is totally banned, but it's going on, I, I think, the BTC or the Manas National Park Authority can only stop. You know, we can advise them. And I think the authority can also involve the local community, the fringe area people, like village defense police, you know, BDP. If, I think that way only, I think it can be helped. Otherwise, you know, the, if the department comes once, they patrol and they will go. So it is a vacant. If the village defense police will be encouraged or enriched with, with all support, maybe the tours, raincoat, this and that, all, all the support with the law, I think then I think we can restrict this illegal logging. Right. Yes. Uh, I think we have, we can take just one question. We have less than one minute left. Uh, so it is from Gopal Sharma. It's a duty of government uh, it is a duty of for the for government departments to safeguard the endangered wildlife. How much uh, NGOs are helping to preserve their homelands uh, with their existing facilities? I, I, I mean, it's a, very, it's a very general question, I guess, nothing to do with golden langur in particular. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, government is playing their own role. We are, we are supporting the government. You know, we are not uh, taking anything. We are just uh, support. We are acting as a catalyst between the government and the people. So in that way, only NGO as a, I'm an NGO worker, we are helping as a work, as a catalyst where we can, we can support the government. Right. Thank you. So I think we had about 10, 12 questions left uh, and we, we are running short of time. What we can do, we can uh, answer some of these questions through uh, left uh, email, uh, through email. So I will we'll keep communicating. I would like to thank everyone again.